Rub up your engines! Roy Hines says, Scotty, what's the break-in period for a new car? Is it better to have the first oil change at 1,000 miles or 5,000? Thanks. All right. When I was a young mechanic in the 60s, cars did have to be broken in. The metal wasn't as good. The oils weren't as good. We changed the oil the first time for like 500 miles. You wouldn't drive it over 55 miles, 60 miles an hour for the first thousand or two thousand miles but modern cars are different they don't really have that much of a break-in period if you want to be conservative sure change the oil I'd say at two thousand miles for the first time but then just go to five thousand miles and you know leave it at that cars don't need to be broken in like they used to because there's a lot more technology involved in them better metallurgy the oils are better than they used to be the gasoline is also better than they used to be so you really don't have to think that much about breaking a car in the only thing I say it's not a good idea for the first thousand miles to put it on cruise control and put it at 75 and leave it because it's always the same speed you want to vary the speed a little when you break it in the first thousand miles so I'd use my foot not the cruise control so you could change the speed a little bit so it isn't just stuck at the same rpm for hours on end Dick Habib says I got rotten egg smell from my exhaust I got a Suzuki Swift I called the mechanic and he said there's no check engine light I can't do anything rotten eggs is sulfur and you say it's coming out of the exhaust when you rev the engine up so it's not your car's battery the battery acid can smell like sulfur too when a battery goes bad but yours is coming out of the exhaust now one I would change where you're buying fuel go to a different station they probably have too much sulfur in the fuel that you're buying the other is they sell cleaners there's one called cat clean go to auto parts store say can you give me some cat clean if you can't get it on Amazon pour it in your gas tank that can clean the sulfur out so it won't stink anymore if it runs okay it isn't hurting anything but over time the sulfur will ruin your catalytic converter so change where you're buying your fuel and put some cat clean in it it could go away just from changing the fuel California man says we drive in snowy mountains of California a few times a year and have to put on chains well the all-wheel drives get to drive without chains I want to use vehicle you can look at all right you know the Subarus make excellent all-wheel drive vehicles every single vehicle they make except for their fancy little sports car is all-wheel drive so there's plenty of Subarus out there they're pretty solid built you might look at a Subaru now you're saying uh, you're going to use it to go over a few times get a good used one you know you don't need to go all out for a new one and there's plenty of good used ones out there plus if you do know how to drive a standard transmission it'll get stuck less often with all-wheel drive than an automatic so get a standard Standard transmission Subaru for two reasons one they won't get stuck and the other is their standard transmissions are 50 times better than their automatic transmission so look for an all-wheel drive Subaru R Smith 319 says should I buy a 2016 Chevrolet Cruze LT Premier in Canada I live in Canada where insurance is mandatory Honda and Toyota are expensive should I get a 2016 Cruze I only need it for work and college for five to six years well I wouldn't buy a Cruze in the United States so I can't see any reason I'd buy it in Canada either I got a customer who bought one he's got picture of Mickey Mouse in the back and I said well why is you had a picture of Mickey Mouse in the back of your window he said because this is a Mickey Mouse car the transmission's already gone out twice and they fixed it but now it's going out again and it's out of warranty he says I'll never buy another one of these pieces of junk you're talking about 2016 let's say it still shifts and runs okay if you can get it really cheap okay but still you know you're better off getting something better made than the cruise I mean let's face it if the Honda and Toyotas are too expensive look at some of the Mazdas they're pretty well made too I, I would stay away from cruises most GMs but especially the cruise it's basically one of the worst vehicles they ever made the Robert 670 says I got an 07 Hummer H3 five cylinder whenever I shift it and drive the truck doesn't move unless I step on the gas pedal halfway I change the transmission oil, but nothing works any idea what's causing this yeah I can tell you the Hummers the H H3s were actually dismal failures they were much cheaper made than the H2s the H3s not so much they were making them in Shreveport Louisiana the factories all shut down now you got a problem in your transmission if you want to try what the heck you said you changed the fluid drain one quart of fluid out and put one quart of the Lucas automatic transmission anti-slip see if it helps and if it does great if not it generally means that the oil pump inside the transmission is going out just like your engine it has oil pump that pumps oil in the engine your automatic transmission has an automatic transmission oil pump that pumps fluid throughout the transmission and when they start to wear that'll happen sometimes that Lucas slip actually does work now if it doesn't then you got to decide you want to have the transmission rebuilt or do you want to get rid of the vehicle that's your choice you might warm it up and trade it in <laughs>
If it works better when it's warmed up and that Lucas doesn't fix it, take it to Carmex, straight it in. They'll buy anything. Ryan V says, hey, would an 01 Camry 4-banger be too old for a daily driver? I don't think so. <laughs> I got customers with him. I got customers got a 98 Camry that he paid a thousand bucks for and he's still driving that thing around. They're solid engines that could run a really long time. The engines are good. The transmissions are good. The brakes are good. Everything on them is good. I don't think it's too old. You know, maybe you got to put a little money in to fix, but since they made so many aftermarket parts, let's say your CV joint breaks, right? You can get a CV new entire axle with both joints on it. Places like AutoZone sometimes as little as 60 bucks. So, uh, Go ahead. Uh, this, there's no, you can get parts for them and they can last a long time. That's not too old. U.S. Man Aft AB55 says, How long can a VW Tiguan 2019 last without any problems? Very good questions. Volkswagens generally turn into endless money pits as they age, but it's not that old now. Let's say you want to compare it to a Toyota or a Honda. Well, those things can go two, three, four hundred thousand miles lots of times. The Volkswagens, eh, once they get more than 70, 80,000 miles on them, they generally start to get very expensive problems. Uh, they're all plastic, especially the new ones. The plastic stuff cracks and breaks. Any electronics start to break down as they get older. I mean, if you don't own one, my advice is don't buy one. But if you're ready, own the Tiguan, change the oil regularly, service the transmission and baby it and stay away from accidents because I had a customer with one it's all plastic crap and he just got sideswiped a little bit a guy's truck bumper nicked his front bumper and it tore the whole front of the car off so <laughs> they're all plastic junk you don't want to get in a wreck with those things and they would just come apart just like as Rodney Dangerfield said a Chinese motorcycle only worse because these are all plastic and all the plastic pieces are connected to other plastic pieces and when you hit them they just rip off like an old band-aid I was amazed at the damage that was done on that thing from a very minor the guy just nicked them with the clip of his bumper when he passed them and it ripped the whole front of the car off <laughs> Here we go. Porsche is trying to help all us poor people out. They have a new entry level Porsche Taycan that's rear wheel drive only, and it starts at $80,000. So they're really helping us all out now. So they're ditching the front wheel drive on it. And it's only rear wheel drive, so that if you got the all wheel drive one, the Taycan 4S, that's $103,000. And it's only $80,000 for the rear wheel drive. So, I mean, maybe I should buy two of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, they are electric cars, and they claim that they can charge from 5% electricity to 80% in 22 and a half minutes, so they can charge up faster. Or if you're in a real hurry and you're not going far, you can get 60 miles of charge in about five minutes. If you've got 60 miles to go and you only have five minutes to charge it up. Of course, if you can find a supercharger where you are, <laughs> always take that into consideration. It's got 402 horsepower. So, you know, you want to get yourself a budget-minded Porsche. Uh, these electric ones, they, now they're only starting at $80,000. <laughs> well, if you're into Ford trucks and live in Europe, the Europeans are getting this radical sporty Ford Ranger MSRT. It's a nice looking truck, and of course, it's set up for the European market, at least the market as it stands now, because the basic one is a twin turbo two liter diesel engine puts out 210 horsepower so this thing will be able to pull there is no arguing that now of course americans aren't all that big on diesels but in europe they are at least for the time being until they decide they're not going to allow people to drive them anymore or sell them so who knows how long it's going to last but i gotta say it's a pretty sharp looking little truck this little bitty ranger i guess i figure the europeans are more conservative it only comes to three colors frozen white sea gray or agate black so you got white gray or black well this is better than henry for its first idea of the Model T. If you can get any color you want, as long as it's black. <laughs> Shame they don't sell them in the United States. It's a nice looking truck. The other day I checked out a Canyon that had the diesel engine in it, four cylinder diesel, and it was a nice vehicle to drive around in. The engine for the Canyon, it was made in uh, Thailand. They say they're going to be making them in Flint, Michigan soon, but the four cylinder ones, the one that it was in, it was three years old. It was made in Thailand, and it, basically it's an Isuzu diesel, which Isuzu's been making diesel engines for a really long time, and they know what they're doing, so. And the Europeans have been using diesel engines for a really long time. I doubt if they'll probably end up selling in the diesel version here in the United States. This is a special European vision that they're making for the Europeans. I gotta say, it's a pretty sharp little truck. Because realize in Europe, they're not that into big giant trucks. Everything there is smaller, there's less room, so it kind of makes sense for the Europeans. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.